Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Paul Peters and today we are continuing reading through the Bible in a year. Today is day 12 of reading through the Bible. Uh, today's scriptures are Genesis chapters 34 through 36. Um, I'll be reading this from the New Living Translation. But before I get started, make sure you hit subscribe, click the bell icon down below to turn on your notifications so you can stay up to date with what day I'm on and what the scriptures for the day are. All right, thanks again for tuning in. Here we go with Genesis chapter 34. One day Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and Leah went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince Shechem, son of Hamor the Hivite, saw Dinah, she seized her and raked her. But then he fell in love with her, and he tried to win her affection with tender words. He said to his father Hamor, Get me this young girl. I want to marry her. Soon Jacob had heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah. But since his sons were out in the fields herding his livestock, he said nothing until they returned. Hamor, Shechem's father, came to discuss the matter with Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious that their sister had been raped. Shechem had done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, something that should never be done. Hamor tried to speak with Jacob and his sons. My son Shechem is truly in love with your daughter, he said. Please let him marry her. In fact, let's arrange other marriages too. You give us your daughters for our sons, and we will give you our daughters for your sons. And you may live among us. The land is open to you. Settle here and trade with us, and feel free to buy property in the area. Then Shechem himself spoke to Dinah's father and brothers. Please be kind to me, and let me marry her, he begged. I will give you whatever you ask. No matter what dowry or gift you demand, I will gladly pay it. Just give this, just give the girl as my wife. But since Shechem had defiled their sister, Dinah, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shechem and his father Hamor. They said to them, We couldn't possibly allow this, because you're not circumcised. It would be a disgrace for our sister to marry a man like you. But here is a solution. If every man among you will be circumcised like we are, then we will give you our daughters and will take your daughters for ourselves. We will live among you and become one people. But if you don't agree to be circumcised, we will take her and be on our way. Hamor and his son Shechem agreed to their proposal. Shechem wasted no time in acting on this request for he wanted Jacob's daughter desperately. Shechem was a highly respected member of his family, and he went with his father Hamor to present this proposal to the leaders at the town gate. These men are our friends, they said. Let's invite them to live here among us and trade freely. Look, the land is large enough to hold them. We can take their daughters as wives and let them marry ours. But they will consider staying here and becoming one people with us only if all of our men are circumcised, just as they are. But if we do this, all their livestock and possessions will eventually be ours. Come, let's agree to their terms and let them settle here among us. So all the men in the town council agreed with Hamor and Shechem, and every male in the town was circumcised. But three days later, when their wounds were still sore, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, who were Dinah's full brothers, took their swords and entered the town without opposition. Then they slaughtered every male there, including Hamor and his son Shechem. They killed them with their swords, then took Dinah from Shechem's house and returned to their camp. Meanwhile, the rest of Jacob's sons arrived. Finding the men slaughtered, they plundered the town because, of their, because their sister had been defiled there. They seized all the flocks and herds and donkeys, everything they could lay their hands on, both inside the town and outside in the fields. They looted all their wealth and plundered their houses. They also took all their little children and wives and led them away as captives. Afterward, Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have ruined me. 
You've made me stink among all the people of this land, among all the Canaanites and Perizzites. We are so few that they will join forces and crush us. I will be ruined and my entire household will be wiped out. But why should we let him treat our sister like a prostitute? They retorted angrily. Genesis chapter 35. Then God said to Jacob, Get ready and move to Bethel and settle there. Build an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob told everyone in his household, Get rid of all your pagan idols, purify yourselves, and put on clean clothing. We are now going to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all their pagan idols and earrings, and he buried them under the great tree near Shechem. As they set out, a terror from God spread over the people in all the towns of that area. So no one attacked Jacob's family. Eventually, Jacob and his household arrived at Luz, also called Bethel, in Canaan. Jacob built an altar there and named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel, because God had appeared to him there when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Soon after this, Rebekah's old nurse, Deborah, died. She was buried beneath the oak tree in the valley below Bethel. Ever since, the tree has been called Alon Bakuth, which means Oak of Weeping. Now that Jacob had returned from Padan Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants. And I will give you the land I once gave to Abraham and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. Then God went up from the place where he had spoken to Jacob. Jacob set up a stone pillar to mark the place where God had spoken to him. Then he poured wine over it as an offering to God and anointed the pillar with olive oil. And Jacob named the place Bethel, which means house of God, because God had spoken to him there. Leaving Bethel, Jacob and his clan moved on toward Ephrath. But Rachel went into labor while they were still some distance away. Her labor pains were intense. After a very hard delivery, the midwife finally exclaimed, Don't be afraid. You have another son. Rachel was about to die, but with her last breath, she named the baby Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. The baby's father, however, called him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Jacob set up a stone monument over Rachel's grave, and it can be seen there to this day. Then Jacob traveled on and camped beyond Migdal Eder while he was living there. Reuben had intercourse with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Jacob soon heard about it. These are the names of the twelve sons of Jacob. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. These are the names of the sons who were born to Jacob at Padan Aram. So Jacob returned to his father Isaac in Mamre, which is near Kiriath Arba, now called Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had both lived as foreigners. Isaac lived for 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died at a ripe old age, joining his ancestors in death, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis chapter 36. This is the account of the descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. Esau married two young women from Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ohilabama, the daughter of Anna and granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite. He also married his cousin Basemith, who was the daughter of Ishmael, 
and the sister of Nebaioth. Ada gave birth to a son named Eliphaz for Esau. Basemath gave birth to a son named Ruel. Ohalibama gave birth to sons named Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. All these sons were born to Esau in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his children, and his entire household, along with his livestock and cattle, all the wealth he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and moved away from his brother Jacob. There was not enough land to support them both because of all the livestock and possessions they had acquired. So Esau, also known as Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of Esau's descendants, the Edomites, who lived in the hill country of Sir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife, Ada, and Ruel, the son of Esau's wife, Basemath. The descendants of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Timnah, the concubine of Esau's son, Eliphaz, gave birth to a same name, Amalek. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Basemath. Esau also had sons through Oholiabama, the daughter of Anna and granddaughter of Zibion. Their names were Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the descendants of Esau, who became the leaders of various clans. The descendants of Esau's oldest son, Eliphaz, became the leaders of the clans of Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Eliphaz. All these were descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Esau's son, Ruel, became the leaders of the clans of Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Ruel. All these were descendants of Esau's wife, Basemath. The descendants of Esau and his wife, Ohilabama, became the leaders of the clans of Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the clan leaders who descended from Esau's wife, Oholibama, the daughter of Anna. These are the clans descended from Esau, also known as Edom, identified by their clan leaders. These are the names of the tribes that descended from Seir, the Horite. They lived in the land of Edom, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Deshaun, Ezer, and Deshan. These were the Horite clan leaders, the descendants of Seir, who lived in the land of Edom. The descendants of Lotan were Hori and Hemam. Lotan's sister was named Timna. The descendants of Shobal were Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The descendants of Zibion were Ea and Anna. This is the Anna who discovered the hot springs in the wilderness while he was grazing his father's donkeys. The descendants of Anna were his son Deshan and his daughter Aholiabama. The descendants of Deshan were Hemdan, Eshban, Ethran, and Kiran. The descendants of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Achan. The descendants of Deshan were Uz and Aran. So these were the leaders of the Horite clans. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Deshan, Ezer, and Deshan. The Horite clans are named after their clan leaders who lived in the land of Seir. These are the kings who ruled in the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled in Edom from his city of Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah, from Basra, became king in his place. When Jobab died, Husham, from the land of the Temanites, became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Badad, became king in his place and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who defeated the Midianites in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samla from the city of Masrika became king in his place. When Samla died, Shaul from the city of Rehoboth on the river became king in his place. When Shaul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, became king in his place. When Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, died, Hadad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Pa. His wife was Mahetabal, the daughter of Medrid and granddaughter of Mizabab. These are the names of the leaders of the clans descended from Esau, who lived in the places named for them. Timnah, Alva, Jetheth, Ohilabama, Elah, Pinan, 
Kenaz, Timon, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Aram. These are the leaders of the clans of Edom, listed according to their settlements in the land they occupied. They all descended from Esau, the ancestor of the Edomites. That concludes today's reading. That was day 12 of reading through the Bible in a year. Uh, thank you for tuning in and me attempting to pronounce some of these names. Um, we'll see you tomorrow for day number 13. Love you guys. God bless. Thank you.